Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an infrared remote and sensor with an ESP32 microcontroller. No doubt, in today's modern world, you've used a remote control many times. Things like a TV or stereo or uh, controlling your lights, all sorts of different remote controls. Whereas radio signals can penetrate through walls or other solid materials, infrared signals require line of sight, just like you would point a laser pointer or shine a light on something. They need to be able to see the beam that's being focused at them. Because the wavelength is infrared, you won't be able to actually see that light come on. But if you point your remote at an infrared sensor, it's going to be able to detect those rays pointed at it. I love the ESP32 microcontroller and so I've been using it in a lot of projects lately. In this video I want to show you how you could take the ESP32 microcontroller, add an IR sensor to it, and be able to use any infrared remote that you have laying around the house or any one that you buy in order to send signals to the microcontroller and then trigger anything that you'd like. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm using just the most basic infrared sensor you can find. It only has three terminals, G, R, and Y, which I'll show you in a sec. And from the other side, you can see what the sensor itself looks like. It's a little plastic bead, similar to an LED, but inside this package is the actual sensor. The connection is very, very simple, as I said. There's three pins used on the sensor and the ESP32, the G to ground, 3.3 to the R, and I used pin four, for the Y, any of the pins that work with interrupts apparently work, but I used pin four on the ESP32. And it's really important that you use 3.3 volts because a five volt connection to this device could cause it to stop working properly. The remote I'm using is a simple one that came with a hobby kit, but you could use any infrared remote as long as it has this little infrared uh, LED. As you can see here, the standard look, it's a little clear, again, bead or LED looking package, and that sends the infrared signals. As long as your remote has that, it should work fine for this application. Loading the Arduino IDE, I'm just gonna go to manage libraries under tools, and once it's loaded up, I'm gonna search for IR remote or infrared remote. There's a specific library here that is for the ESP8266 or ESP32 microcontrollers. And so once you've searched for that and scroll down, you'll see it. It's referred to by the ESP8266, but it's the same one that's going to work just fine for us, the ESP32. So go ahead and install that. I already have it installed. Then once it's installed, you can go to the example sketches. I'm going to scroll down until I find the folder for IR remote ESP8266. And then I'm going to go to the I receive demo. And maximize that so you can see it. And here's just a basic introduction of who wrote it and what it's used for. Some libraries that are called and are required. And then you need to change the receiving pin that you have connected on your ESP32. For me, I'm using pin 4. So I'm simply going to delete the one here. And pin 4 will be what works fine for my microcontroller. There's a call to the IR receive function, setting it up and initializing it. And then we're going to need to decode the results into a variable called results. The setup loop just turns on the serial monitor and also initializes that IR receive library. And then in the loop, it's really quite simple. It's going to check to see if there is an infrared input, and then it's going to take those results and decode them into a hexadecimal format and print them out. The size of that result is not printable, as you can see here, and that's why they've used a custom function, which is print the unsigned integer 64-bit instead of the serial print line. And then they use the, an empty print line string just to return and start a new line. The last thing it does is simply start over again, waiting for the next value. If we upload that sketch and try it out, you can see here that it does indeed work for every button on the remote that I press. We get a hexadecimal value of six characters, and occasionally you do get these long strings of just all F, and that basically tells you that there's a problem reading the value that's coming in. Maybe it's because the signal's coming in too quickly, I'm not sure, but you do get a little bit of noise. So if you're gonna make more advanced code, you might need to put some error handling in, but that's all you need to do to decode and know exactly what each button is producing 
ping when it's received by the microcontroller. With that simple step complete, you can go in here and add your own handling of what happens when that particular button is pressed. So you go into the loop, you change some of the code inside of this if statement, and in this case I just created another if, which says that if the value received is equal to the hexadecimal equivalent of the five key, then it's going to print out five is detected. You notice there that you do need to put the zero X before the hexadecimal code, just to tell it that it is hexadecimal, and then inside the if statement, you can put whatever code you would want to be triggered, whether that creates an output, does something else, or those variables get converted into something else, it's entirely up to you. If we upload the modified code, you can see here that when I press the other buttons, as usual, I get different values, but when I press the five, it also triggers my if statement and displays five detected, which is what I told it to be. If you push nice and crisp and clean, you very rarely get that error input, but if you drag it a little bit, you do get it as the signals kind of run together. That's all you need for the absolute basics. If you wanna see a bunch more information on how the infrared works and also different ways that you can use it, check out the DIYI0T.com website. I found it to be really useful. So there you see the basic concepts of how to hook up an infrared sensor to the ESP32, how to communicate with it, and also how to decode those results into something that you can actually use, which is a little more complicated and also varies device to device, depending on what kind of signals the remote actually sends out. Once you spend a bit of time setting up those signals, you can then cause that output to do anything that you would like, whether that's entering a code, triggering an action, hooking up to LEDs, sound, just about anything that you could imagine, and anything that you could use a physical button for, you'd be able to use a standard remote control. In my own use, I'm gonna use it for an escape room so that you could find a seemingly unrelated remote control, point it at something, push a button, and trigger an action. So what will you use an IR remote for? Let me know in the comments or send me an email. My information's in the description below. If you like this kind of content, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check back regularly as I post a new video every weekend. I have so many different interests. Electronics is a big one, but there's so many other kinds of projects that I have coming down the road. So if you're interested in DIY, please stick around and come back regularly. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, whether remote or direct, don't be afraid to be balder.